Bonjour à tous, aujourd'hui vidéo un petit peu spéciale sur la présentation lors de ma prochaine conférence scientifique. J'en profite donc pour parler des résultats que tu exposes lors d'une conférence scientifique. En fait, dans une conférence, on s'en fiche des stats. Bah ouais, ça me coûte de le dire, mais c'est vrai. Oui, parce que finalement, tes stats, ça t'a permis de valoriser tes données. Et tes données, tu les as récoltées. Pourquoi Pour répondre à une question scientifique. Donc ce qui est important dans une conférence scientifique, c'est justement de discuter de ta question et de ce que tes résultats apportent comme réponse à cette question scientifique. Ceci étant dit, voici un exemple d'application. Bon, par contre, comme c'est une conférence internationale, ce sera en anglais. The social complexity hypothesis for a communicative complexity states that living in a complex social system requires having complex communication skills. But it can also be the other way around. Having more complex communication systems may have favor the evolution of more complex social systems. However, the tricky task for testing that hypothesis is to define both social and communicative complexity. To measure complexity, authors usually rely on numbers. So, a social complex system is complex because it has a high number of individuals. A communicative system, such as a vocal system, is complex if it has a high number of signals. But these are rather crude approximation of complexity. For example, it doesn't take into account how individuals interact. Although there is no consensus on the general definition of complexity, there is a consensus that the behavior of complex system is difficult to predict, so we can measure complexity of a system by measuring its uncertainty. So now, what creates uncertainty in a communicative system? It could be the degree of association between vocal signals and their context of occurrence. Here you have different acoustic structure and you have different emission context. If this configuration is more frequent, meaning one acoustic structure is linked to one emission context, then you don't face a lot of uncertainty because if you hear an acoustic structure, you get the information about the context of emission. On the contrary, if this configuration is more frequent, meaning one acoustic structure is linked to several emission contexts, then the level of uncertainty is higher because even if you hear an acoustic structure, you have to see the context to get the information. To address contextual complexity, there are actually two situations. We have called the first situation context specificity and it is based on social interactions. More precisely, we are studying whether an acoustic structure belongs to a specific context or whether it can belong to more than one context. In this situation, there is a higher degree of uncertainty when acoustically similar calls are produced in different social contexts. We have called the second situation call specificity, and it refers to comments on social interactions. Common calls have been reported in Barbary macaques where a bystander may vocalize while attending an interaction between group mates. However, it is not known whether common calls have a specific acoustic structure. If so, it may be a way to distantiate oneself from the immediate context. So, okay, I'm physically in one context, but maybe perhaps vocally I am in another one. In this situation, there is a higher level of uncertainty when acoustically dissimilar calls are produced in the same social context. To test the social complexity hypothesis in these two situations, I now need to find species that differ in their level of social uncertainty in their social interactions. And it is what we can find in macaques. Macaques share the same basic patterns of organization. They live in multi-male, multi-female groups where usually the males emigrate as adults, all the females remain in their groups, and this leads to matrilinear structure. But they also show wide interspecific differences, especially in the way social relationships constrain the social interactions. More precisely, you have two different social styles, extremes. For intolerant macaques, when a dominated individual is aggressed by a dominant one, 
Usually the dominated individual is going to flee or submit. It is a kind of black and white system. You can predict the result of a social interactions and thus the individual face a low degree of uncertainty. But this is not the same intolerant species. Intolerant macaques, when a dominated individual is threatened by a dominant one, the dominated one can flee, but also protest or even counterattack. It is harder to predict the result of a social interaction. There is way more options, outcomes. They face a higher degree of uncertainty and are therefore more socially complex. Therefore, I compared two intolerant species, the Japanese macaques and the rhesus macaques, and two tolerant species, the Tonkian and the Christian macaques. According to the social complexity hypothesis, I should find more complexity in the vocal system of tolerant species and therefore a higher degree of freedom in the association between structure and context in this species. And this is precisely the two predictions in the two situations. For context specificity, I expect the degree of overlap of acoustic structure with context should be more pronounced in tolerant than in intolerant macaques. And for call specificity, I expect a higher degree of differentiation between commenting calls and calls emitted in the neutral context, intolerant species compared to intolerant species. To test this prediction, I studied the vocalization of female macaques. I studied several groups in captivity, two groups of Japanese macaques, two groups of rhesus macaques, also intolerant macaques, four groups of Tonkian macaques, and two groups of crested macaques in the wild. Using focal sampling, I obtained acoustic data, which allowed me to obtain spectrograms, which are the evolution of the frequency as a function of the time, and to take different acoustic measures, such as duration, energy quantize, and entropy, which is here a measure of the noise within the call. I also add information about the context, which allowed me to classify the calls into three categories, agonistic if the sender was involved in an agonistic interaction, affiliative if the sender was involved in an affiliative interaction, and neutral when the sender is neither involved in an agonistic nor in an affiliative interaction. To study context specificity of calls, I use cluster analysis. In this layout, each small circle corresponds to a call. Each color corresponds to a different context, affiliative, agonistic or neutral. Each big circle corresponds to a cluster which groups together calls of similar acoustic structure. I randomly took 50 calls in each context and set this proportion of the different contexts in the different clusters using the Shannon's entropy index. If you have more of these patterns that is tidy, one structure is linked to one context, then you will have a low entropy value, which reflects a strong link between structure and context. On the contrary, if you have more of this configuration, you have different colors in the different clusters, then you will get a higher entropy value that will reflect a loser link between structure and context. I did this several times using a bootstrap procedures and this has the results that I show here. I randomly selected 50 cones per context and then I was looking at the proportion of the different contexts in the different clusters and for this I used Shannon's entropy. I did it several times using bootstraps and these are the results. Here I show entropy as a function of species. This shows that tolerant macaques have higher entropy values than intolerant macaques. This means either that calls emitted in different social contexts are closer in acoustic structure intolerant species compared to intolerant species, or that structure typical from one context are emitted in higher proportion in another context. But in any case, it leads to more uncertainty in vocal signaling. A loose structure context links indicates that the vocal communication system may be richer and has the potential to convey more information with a greater variety of meanings. There is also a higher potential for expressiveness. In intolerant species like Japanese and rhesus macaques, there is a lower need for expressivity because they face quite straightforward social situations.
On the contrary, in tolerant species, the use of weakly context-dependent signals can increase their negotiation skills that can allow them to manage open contexts. The other situation in which the strength of the association between acoustic structure and utterance context could be investigated in common calls. I therefore compared the structure of different types of calls. So this individual is not involved in the social interaction, but he vocalizes within three seconds of the start of the social interaction. I classified these calls as commenting calls. Then I compared the structure of common calls to the structure of calls usually made during the social interaction and also to calls usually emitted in the natural context, which I labeled as a non-contextualized calls. Not that I couldn't do it for Japanese MacX because I had less information at the triadic level. I compared call structure using MANOVA with permutation and I got these results. Here you have a layout to illustrate the results of the pair MANOVA. In versus MacX, commenting calls did not significantly differ from uncontextualized calls. And we can see it with a big overlap which suggests that commenting calls do not have any other information compared to uncontextualized calls. It was not the same in Tonka and MacX. In Tonka and MacX, commenting calls significantly differ from uncontextualized calls, meaning that maybe commenting calls had another information compared to uncontextualized calls, and maybe that information is linked to the social interaction itself, and it is what the results in Christ MacX suggest, with a non-significant difference between interaction calls and commenting calls. The study of commenting calls brought another dimension to the study of the link between acoustic structure and emission context, because it examines the ability of individuals to distinguish from their immediate context. I didn't find it in versus MacX, which is consistent with the fact that if a social interaction is predictable, there is less need to give a specific information. On the contrary, in species where there is more uncertainty in terms of social interaction, it might be beneficial to share the information within the group. It can also help them to express emotional response toward interactions that are occurring, and it is consistent with a system of tolerant species where individuals show a strong commitment to the behaviors of others. Using results from both situations, we found a higher degree of freedom in the association between structure and context in tolerant MacX compared to in intolerant MacX. Degree of freedom was a measure for communicative complexity, which therefore correlates with the level of uncertainty and thus social complexity. This results support the social complexity hypothesis. However, phylogenetic relatedness between species was a possible confounding factor. Indeed, Japanese and Russian MacX on one side and Tonkin and Crested MacX on the other side belong to two different MacX lineage. In another paper, we discuss it and show that the phylogenetic hypothesis could not explain all the results, although the social complexity hypothesis could. But of course, future work should add more species and groups to confirm our current results. Voilà, comment ça se passe la présentation des résultats en conférence scientifique. Si tu veux plus d'informations sur l'étude, je te mets le lien de l'article en barre d'infos. A bientôt